Trinidad and Tobago is slowly and cautiously returning to life after the stay-at-home, stay-safe restrictions imposed to stem the spread of the pandemic, COVID-19. More businesses have begun operations. More activities with controlled numbers are taking place. Vice Co-Chair, Senator the Honorable Alison West, says members of the public have made significant contributions towards our recovery. We have been amazed at the resounding support we have got during this initiative from the public. We have had several written submissions from various organizations and individuals. We have received close to a thousand submissions. We are looking at all of them and there are many valuable contributions and suggestions in them. At the third meeting of the committee, Vice Co-Chair Jerry Brooks briefed the Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, on some of the major recommendations. The agricultural sector is responsible for 1% of GDP and is responsible for 23,000 persons being employed. Interestingly, the agriculture bill, the food import bill for Trinidad and Tobago is $5.9 billion. And there is an opportunity immediately to reduce our dependence on specific imported foods. Vasa and Barrett calls that fast developing crops, fast crops. And he also talks about putting useful land, making useful land available and putting it to work immediately. And there you're focusing on things like staples, vegetables, fruits, livestock, fisheries. We've got to cut this bill of $5.9 billion, put people to work, drive local content, and husband our scarce foreign exchange resources. The third recommendation is that we have to make Trinidad and Tobago a more secure nation by transitioning from manual high-risk, low-return activity to temperature-controlled, rain-harvested, greenhouse environment. So you're really operating bifocally. You have the traditional farming, but you also migrate now to the new-fledged, hydrophonic, temperature-controlled, science-based farming. Where yields and productivity are better, where you're managing pesticide, you're managing predial larceny, and we're driving our production up. The construction sector is responsible for 5.8% of GDP. It employs 88,700 people, down from about 100,000 people three or four years ago. And it's $9.4 billion in contribution to our GDP. The construction sector is very relieved about the ability to restart all sectors, which means that we have approximately 88, 89,000 people going back to work. The second key issue that is going to be required is to resolve the debts owed to contractors on outstanding certificates. That bill is $442.6 million and the fiscal program to September 2018 is $3.267 billion. What we must avoid is we must avoid protestation and argument about delays so that they put in funds, suppliers are put in funds, subcontractors are put in funds and the chain begins to work. It's also absolutely crucial that once they have started, we must avoid the stop, start, and the claims associated with demobilization um, that go with it and the frustration. The third area that I think we need to tee up is over $600 million in projects that are immediately available from the private sector to get to work in new projects. And then the fourth is the ease of doing business. I am very happy to report that when I met with the Ministry of Trade, their platform called Develop TT is in a very advanced stage. We have caused the meeting to occur between the private sector, the TTCA, APET, the Association of Engineers, TTIA, the Association of Architects, the land surveyors to look at the platform and then for them to come onto the platform and to work with us as we rule it out. We have to move people from a paper environment to a paperless environment. And we're also doing a considerable amount of work with TN Tech, EMA, Fire, Wasser, and I think Alan Waller will be delighted to hear this, to decentralize authority so that you see it in the system and we're able to accelerate the process of approvals and reduce the amount of people. So that's one of the positive outcomes coming out of this. As So the, the recommendation here is urgently implement the business development um, um, solution. The next sector, Prime Minister, is the energy sector. And there's nothing more important here 
than the urgent assessment of the sustainability of the gas value chain and progression of discussions and negotiations to ensure competitive, viable, and sustainable investment sector. And Vince Pereira would remind us that we have to complete the, we have to complete the gas value chain negotiations. There are several issues in here. There's the issue of the structural imbalance in demand and supply now, which is likely to recede. There are issues in terms of supply chain. There are also issues in terms of value cap tier and between midstream, upstream, and downstream, and there are a host of regulatory issues around this. It's not an easy issue, but I think it requires focus because the one thing that could affect our income in the next three months will be how we tease out that value chain and then how do we get plans to work again. The second area is to ensure that we stimulate activity in the sector through the maintaining of ongoing projects and the acceleration of unplanned projects. This is to support the energy services sector because the downstream energy services sector, which is the energy services guys as opposed to the downstream, they're hurting and we need to, we need to stimulate that, that chain. And finally, we have to move our sector, our energy services sector, and our energy sector outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So Guyana and Suriname provide wonderful examples, but we have a host of people who have retired from Petrotrin, and we have a host of capable companies. We have to cause them to drive outside so that we drive up our remittance income, and we also to utilize their skills. Mr. Brooks continued providing the brief to the Prime Minister on the work of the members of the sector committees. The next sector, Prime Minister, is the manufacturing sector. That's responsible for 19.4% of GDP, or $30 billion. It employs 52,300 persons. Most of those persons are actually back out to work because the large manufacturers really consume about 45 or 46,000 of those people. You have 814 small or medium-sized enterprises in the sector employing 5,106 people, they would have gone back out to work. Those are really the small and micro manufacturers and they need a couple of things. One is that they need swift access to, li to liquidity support. And so a program of $300 million has been crafted. Karen Dabisi is leading that with the banks. There is a moratorium period. It's scheduled to occur over a three year period with a very low interest rate to be disbursed both by the, by the first citizens as well as by other institutions. So the liquidity support program is something which is absolutely essential. Um, we are also proposing as well that they have, we provide a 75% guarantee by government. They will put, provide 25%. They must have skin in the game. The services sector is the next sector. Um, it's 42% of GDP, it's 69% of employees, and this sector perhaps is the widest in terms of spread because it includes things like your gyms, yachting, tourism, hospitality, barbers, hairdressers, professional services, so it's a wide spectrum. And the challenge here, of course, is that given the breadth of the spectrum and given some of the, some of the intimacy of some of the services, um, if I'm a barber, if I'm a hairdresser, I've got to become very close to you, a dentist as well. And therefore, the provision of emergency support and grants to the sector, particularly where they are micro in nature, is absolutely important. And we recommend in here that NETCO focus on the sector. It may need to be topped up on the basis of how long these persons remain out. The third recommendation is to create an ecosystem for transformation to a digital nation, creating a G2C, government to citizen, G2D, G2G, government to government, and G2B, government to business. Those are the platforms that we see, integrated, cohesive, thoughtful, unique identity with a team reporting straight into you, Prime Minister, with clear terms of reference, phase one, phase two, phase three. You know what each phase is, you know what it costs, you know what the deliverables are, and we manage it. In the case of Tobago, there are three or four recommendations. Accelerate the implementation of key construction projects. There are several projects in the state's suite of projects that, are, that, that will be coming on in that will be restarted and secondly that will continue into 2021. Those will have to be subject to a reprioritization based on the government's needs, the new COVID environment and the availability of funding. Um, the THC has identified several of those. In my conversations with Joel Jack, um, Alan Richards, um, Alan Warner who is responsible for Tobago, Alan Warner is suggesting that the THA allocation 
to Tobago that we look very certainly at that and we try to divert as much as we could into infrastructural spend so that we, we avail ourselves of the benefit of that spend. The ease of doing business also was raised by Alan Warner painfully where he spoke about his experience with the credit unions and the need for us to improve the ease of doing business. That is going to be one of the authorities on the call with us and the move to business development I think certainly will be very helpful. And thirdly or fourthly, there's the opportunity to explore channels to supply aggregate from Studley Park to Trinidad and also to Guyana. That's an, an avenue in which we can explore that hard rock, break it up, and it's particularly useful for coastal development. Guyana is one of the territories now that I think is, is, is requesting it. The committee is also mindful of the anticipated prolonged closure of our borders and its likely adverse impact on tourism in Tobago and Trinidad and is crafting with the sector critical initiatives to strengthen, reposition and build future resilience in the tourism industry. The Prime Minister shared a personal story behind one of the initiatives he sees as very important. In my very first job I used to carry a diary which I had to record every single day where I went and what I did. And at the end of the month, my supervisor would look in there and then from that diary, if I had to be um, paid for traveling or lunch money or if I was absent, there was a record. All those things fell by the wayside. And if there's one thing I want to get out of this exercise is to get the, the, the public service in particular and the private sector. Because then once you get there, in the public, there should really be no distinction between the public and the private sector in using this technology. But the public sector has to drive it. The information presented in this series reflects phase one of government's roadmap to recovery, outlining emergency measures in the first 90 days to help stabilize the economy and aid recovery as quickly as possible. This was a production of the Ministry of Communications.